there was ever a year to start a garden, this is it, my friends. But if you're planning to head to the garden store and fill your car up with seedlings, stop. Because what I'm gonna show you in today's video is going to save you a whole lot of cash and give you much better vegetables than yet. It's the depths of winter here in Wyoming and my garden is very brown and very much dead. But even though I won't start my own seedlings until March, there's still plenty of planning and dreaming to do. This time of year, it's always so hard for me to believe if the garden's ever gonna look good again, but it always comes back. When I first started gardening, I was so intimidated by the idea of starting seeds. I just didn't do it for many years. You know, there's that whole question of which seeds are best started indoors and then you have to figure out when to start them like you can't be too early you can't be too late and then you have to figure out the light situation which can be super confusing at first glance so i just avoided it for years until i realized how much money i was spending at the garden store unnecessarily so in today's video i'm going to show you exactly how i created a seed starting setup that is not expensive it's not complicated and it has literally saved me thousands of dollars over the course of my gardening career i first just want to shed a little light on why we would want to start seeds in the first place there are definitely seeds that i always plant direct in my garden but there are other varieties of vegetables that just take a lot longer to reach maturity. Things like tomatoes or peppers or broccoli. And if I were to just stick those seeds right in the ground at the end of May, there is no way they would be ready to harvest by the time our first snow flies. I can either not grow those vegetables at all, or I can let them get started ahead of time in the house while the snow is still on the ground and it's freezing out here, kind of like it is today. And then I'll move them out here once they have a nice start Dad is strategizing how to take out the drone. Dad. So it's still too early for me to start my seeds, but I do need a way to replace the seedlings that I killed in that mudroom window. So today I'm gonna to plant a few herb seeds just to get my fingers in the dirt and see some green. So not all seeds need to be started indoors or started ahead of time. In fact, there are varieties that actually don't do well to be transplanted. You just have to look at the back of the seed packet. Most seed packets will list instructions right on the back. So for example, this is some cabbage seeds and it says, uh, start the seeds for transplants four to six weeks prior to the transplanting date pretty easy. Um, tomatoes, it's usually eight weeks or so. Peppers are eight to 10 weeks. Hey guys, I just had to pop in and give a little sidebar here. After I recorded the bulk of this video, I became aware that seeds are selling out way more quickly than I thought they would this year. It's kind of crazy. So if you have not ordered your seeds yet, I would recommend doing that ASAP. And one of my very, very favorite seed companies in the whole entire world is True Leaf Market. I got to work with them a bunch last year. They're just a really cool small business. Excellent seeds, fantastic quality, fast shipping, all the heirloom, non-GMO varieties you could ever dream of. And I just so happened to get a coupon code for you guys. And I'll leave that down in the show notes. So the containers you use for your seeds are pretty flexible. You could really just use any sort of container you have around, things you want to reuse or recycle. For years, I would use paper pots that I made myself and stick them in foil lasagna trays. A number of years ago, I invested in these nursery trays. They are plastic and plastic isn't my favorite, but I've reused these for years, so it's not like they're going in the dumpster every year. And then with these trays, I get the packs the four packs that fit inside. You don't have to go this route, but this really wasn't that expensive either. And I reuse them year after year. Other options are peat pots or compostable pots. The only issue with these is that peat isn't a super sustainable material. And so 
I prefer to use materials like coconut coir or other things because I just don't like the idea of using that much paint. Now as far as your potting soil goes, you can get the mixes that are designed specifically for starting seeds, but honestly, I normally just start my seeds in regular old potting soil and rarely do I have an issue. And it's a little bit cheaper. Alrighty, the seeds are planted. Now they need some heat and some light. Now you can grow seeds in a windowsill, especially if you have a good south facing window. However, I've had the most consistent results over the years by using a system that I have set up down in my basement. I actually did used to use this room that I'm in right now to start my seeds. It has a big south facing window. And before we remodeled, there was a half wall right here where some stairs went down into the basement. So I would set this board over the top of the stairs and put my flats of seedlings right here. And it kind of worked, but they would get pretty spindly and kind of weak because the sunlight wasn't quite enough. So this is the setup I have used down here in my basement storage room, as you can see all of the stuff around the edges here. But this has worked like a charm for many years. So the shelving is one of those baker's racks, I think they're called from Costco or Home Depot. And then the lights are just those cheapo four foot shop lights. And I think they're about 15 bucks a pop, so super affordable. Now keep in mind the most important part of this whole equation in this type of a system are the light bulbs or lamps as Christian tells me they're actually called, but I call them light bulbs. So an official grow lamp that would fit one of these fixtures is 7,000 Kelvin. And Kelvin is just a way we measure the temperature of light, but it is important. Now those bulbs are quite a bit more pricey. So to save cash on this, I simply just go get a lamp or a light bulb that is as close to 7,000 Kelvin as it can be. And this is gonna be really easy to tell because it's gonna say right on the packaging or right on the lamp itself. These lamps are 6,500 Kelvin and they have worked perfectly and they're about $3 each, which is way cheaper than a grow light. And then the only other thing to add to this equation is a little bit of heat. We have this system down in our basement. It is cool down here. So we have to add a little space heater to this room just to make sure everything germinates but you may or may not have to do that depending on how cool your house is. And then from there, it's really just a matter of watering your seedlings a little bit every day, checking on them, and that's really it. Here's an example of how these numbers can work in your favor. Let's try tomatoes. We get two packets of seed for $2.50 each for a grand total of five bucks. One light, a couple lamps, some potting soil, the trays, and the inserts. That gives us a final total of $38.50 for approximately 40 plants. Average yield of a tomato plant's around eight pounds conservatively. So if we do the math, that's 320 pounds of tomatoes for 38 bucks. Seed starting can be as complicated as you want it to be or as simple. And really with just the minimal investment of a couple of packets of seeds, a good window or a cheap grow light, and some repurposed containers and a little bit of potting soil, you could very feasibly grow hundreds of pounds of tomatoes and peppers and squash and broccoli for pennies on the dollar. I really believe that some things in life are worth the effort and this is one of them. Is it easier to go to the store and buy seedlings? Sure. It's easier also to just go buy food that's already made for you, but in putting forth effort, and going through the ups and downs of learning something new and growing our own food, it gives us a lot more than just nourishment for our bodies. So I'm really excited for this year, friends. The world feels a little crazy, and I don't think there's ever been a better year to start a garden. So plant those seeds, harvest those tomatoes, let's make it happen.